What's up everyone? After today, you'll never get combinations and permutations mixed up again. Let's dive into it. Now, both of these are something called counting theory, which is just a way to count the number of events that happen. Throughout this video, I'll be using the example of athletes running a race, and as they come across the finish line, they fill spaces. Now the most simple version is actually still a permutation, but it's where the number of athletes exactly matches the number of podium places. Now, when they come across the line, first place can be filled by five different people. Any one of those runners could come in first place. So this number is five. Now, second place, there were five athletes, but there's only four still on the track. And so the number of athletes that could possibly come in second place is four. Likewise, for third place, there's only three athletes back on the track. And so we only have three possible orders. For fourth place, there is now one less than three, there's two athletes still on the track, so either one of those could come in fourth place. And finally, in fifth place, well, there's only one person still on the track, and so there's only one possible arrangement that somebody could come in fifth place out of those who are left. Now, to tie it back into probability, we use this theorem. And we translate it here saying the probability of first place and second place and third place and fourth place and fifth place is going to be the product of all of these numbers. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you're familiar with combinations and permutations already, you'll know that we have a special notation for this. This is written as 5 with an exclamation point. Exclamation point means factorial, which means literally this. It's the product of everything of the number multiplied by n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, etc., all the way down to 0. Now, while we're talking about factorials, there are two special cases to keep in mind for factorials. In other words, there's one way to arrange 0 objects out of 0 objects, and there's also one way to arrange 1 object. Now we're going to be looking at a situation in which these are not equal. more common example for athletes would be if we have, let's say, seven athletes and there's only five podium positions. Now, the last two athletes, we don't really care about the order that they come in because we only care about the podium placers. So let's look at how many possible combinations of this there are. So again, in first place, there are seven different ways that it could happen. So if we had only look, if we were looking at seven athletes into one podium place, the answer would just be seven. Any one of those seven could win. But when we add podium places, that's where the multiplication comes in. So second place, this should look very familiar. Six athletes. Third place, we have five possible athletes. Now I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to write 6th and 7th place even though we have 6th and 7th athletes because we don't care about them, right? We only care about the 5 podium places. So we need a way to mathematically represent this without having to write out every single number every single time we do this. So we're going to find a way to write this using our factorial notation. Now this looks a lot like 7 factorial. 7 factorial includes a 2 and a 1 on the end. So we need a way to cancel out those twos and ones. And so to cancel out these twos and ones, let's just divide by two times one. And we're left with what we want. Now we see that this top is seven factorial and this bottom is actually gonna be the end chunk. So seven minus this number factorial. Let me write it out. 
If we take 7 minus 5 factorial, that leaves us with 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. So our general formula for this So, if we care about the five podium places out of seven athletes, we're going to use this formula here. And you, all you need to remember is that it's our generic permutation formula that we wrote up here. Oops. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get it. So, to remember this difference, we know that our generic permutation formula is just n factorial. And now we want to divide out the remaining. We want to divide out everything that we don't care about. And that's all we're doing with this n minus k factorial, right? It's the 2 times the 1 so that we can cross out on top the remaining portion of it. And we're only left with the k objects that we care about. That's the only difference between these two formulas.